Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Abul Fatih. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander and President of the Supreme Defense Council, the SDC, chaired the meeting of the SDC held at Sakhir Palace. His Majesty expressed appreciation for the noble and distinguished role played by Bahrain Defense Force and its efforts to deliver humanitarian relief aid to Afghanistan, praising its keenness on answering the call of human duty quickly and efficiently, earning it the acclaim of all. His Majesty the King also commended the continuous contributions of the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, led by His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work in youth affairs, Azhar Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the efforts to provide urgent relief aid to Afghanistan, expressing thanks to all those who participated in the evacuation and relief operations and ensured their success. His Majesty stressed that such noble efforts reflect the keenness of the kingdom throughout its national history to contribute along with civilized countries to endeavors aimed at achieving global peace, which affirms its high civilized status among countries of the world. His Majesty the King hailed the tremendous and fruitful efforts made by the PDF, the Interior Ministry and the National Guard, praising their constant keenness to undertake their tasks with courage and unrelenting determination in order to protect the cherished nation and defend its gains. The National Security Advisor and Secretary General of the Supreme Defense Council, Major General His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa briefed the Council on ways to boost defense, security and health capabilities. The Council also discussed the topics on its agenda and took the necessary decisions regarding them for the sake of the security of the nation and citizens and residents. The representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work in Youth Affairs, Azhana Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that popular heritage sports are history and identity that has passed down through generations as a result of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which highlights Bahraini heritage in international participations and contributes to making various achievements. Azhana Sheikh Nasser expressed pleasure with the results of the first round of the race, noting that the achievement are a result of the support of His Majesty the King to Bahraini participations in heritage sports. His Highness stated that heritage sports also received the support of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, which plays a prominent role in Bahrain's achievements in international participations. His Highness Sheikh Nasser noted that the achievements made during the race contributed to highlighting the common heritage aspects and their gulf Arab and Islamic depth, which stems from the interests of the United Arab Emirates in continuing to promote heritage sports. He added that camel racing is one of the most prominent heritage sports. His Highness praised the outstanding efforts made by the various committees of the championship, which reflects UAE's endeavors for the success of all events related to heritage sports. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, president of Bahrain Athletics Association and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Azhan Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received the president of the United Thrower Sports, secretary general of the International Federation of Muay Thai Associations and the vice president of the Global Association of International Sports Federations, the GAISF, Stephen Fox, upon his visit to the kingdom. Azhan welcomed the guest and praised the contributions of the GAISF in developing Developing the talents and skills of the youth. The meeting discussed various means of cooperation in the field of sports, whereby His Highness affirmed the importance of learning from successful sporting experiences for the kingdom. For his part, Fox praised the kingdom's dedication to the field of sports as it reflected in its achievements and added that the efforts of His Highness are integral to the development of Bahraini sports through various initiatives. An MOU with the United Thorough Sports was signed during the meeting in an effort to affirm the role of sports in achieving the goals of sustainable development. The first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and president of Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zahana Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, visited Ittihad Al Reef Club and Malkia Club. The visit was attended by the deputy president of the GSA, Zahana Sheikh Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the CEO of GSA, Dr. Abdurrahman Sadiq Askar. Zahana Sheikh Khalid met with the president of Ittihad Al Reef Club, Abdurrahman Kazim Radi, and the president of Malkia Club, Hisham Jasmat Al 
Nepal and a number of the two clubs' members. His Highness expressed appreciation for the efforts of the clubs through holding events and encouraging the youth to practice sports and participate in local competitions. His Highness listened to a briefing from the presidents of the clubs on the future plans to develop administrative and technical caters. For their part, the presidents of the clubs expressed thanks and appreciation to His Highness for his efforts to serve Bahraini sports, affirming that his visit reflects his appreciation for all sports bodies. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fosi Azainal, held a meeting with the Chairman of the Standing Committee of the Chinese National People's Congress, the NPC, Li Zanshuhas, in which they discussed means of bolstering bilateral relations across various fields. Zainal hailed the depth of the distinguished friendly Bahraini Chinese relations, strengthened steadily as a result of the good relations between the two countries' leaderships. Zainal commended the role played by the two friendly countries in achieving security, stability, and development in the region and the world world, as well as their continuous endeavors to exchange expertise and legislative experiences. The two sides discussed the parliamentary efforts to enhance bilateral economic and trade and investment relations. For his part, the chairman of the Standing Committee of the, of the Chinese National People's Congress expressed appreciation to the kingdom and the role it is playing in achieving peace and stability for people of the region led by His Majesty the King and the efforts exerted by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, asserting the readiness to exert all efforts to strengthen bilateral relations. On the occasion of the International Day of Democracy, the Speaker of the Representatives Council, Fawzi Azinel, hailed the Kingdom's achievements as a result of the support of His Majesty the King to the Legislative Authority since the launch of the Comprehensive and Sustainable Development Reform Process. Zainal stressed that the government, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, devoted most of its efforts to creating the atmosphere for the implementation of the Royal Directives and the success of the Reform and Democratic Project of His Majesty the King. She also affirmed that the legislative institution is keen on developing and improving democratic values and principles and spares no effort to develop the legal and legislative system. On the occasion of the International Day of Democracy, the chairman of the Shura Council, Ali al-Saleh, expressed pride in the democratic approach established by His Majesty the King and its advanced principles to enhance parliamentary life and political participation since the launch of the comprehensive reform process led by His Majesty the King. He stressed that the steps taken by the kingdom to develop its democratic march and expand political participation have become the subject of praise and appreciation at the regional and global levels. Asala hailed the steps the kingdom had taken to allow all loyal national competencies to contribute to national construction, lay the foundations of democracy and respect citizens' rights and political freedoms. Under the patronage of the Under Secretary of Cabinet Affairs and the Honorary President of the Good Word Society, Zahana Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa, the Society organized a remote celebration to honor the winners of the 11th edition of His Highness's Award for Voluntary Work. During his speech at the beginning of the celebration, His Highness Sheikh Isa affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King and under the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, highlighted its global position and the manner with which it confronted the pandemic for the kingdom to become an example to follow in this field at the global level. His Highness added that the award comes in this edition and for the second year in a row to honor the national caterers working in the front lines to combat the coronavirus pandemic in gratitude and appreciation for their humanitarian role and their contributions. The Minister of Labor and Social Development Jamil bin Muhammad Ali Hamidan stressed that the award has succeeded in directing appreciation and gratitude to frontline work 
lawmakers who exerted their efforts and capabilities to mitigate the repercussions of the pandemic. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zaid bin Rashid Zayani, affirmed that the award is an important platform that highlights the role of voluntary work leaders in Bahrain and the Arab world. The chairman of the board of directors of the Good Word Society, Hassan Buhaza, affirmed that voluntary work in Bahrain is witnessing continuous and remarkable development which embodies the wise leadership's belief in the importance of volunteering in contributing to the development and prosperity of society. The honorees affirmed that the award succeeded in promoting charitable and voluntary work and constituted a great incentive for honorable competition in this humanitarian field which aims to improve society and achieve social solidarity. Justice Islamic Affairs and Endowments Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Ali Al Khalifa met with the High Representative for the United Nations Alliance of Civilizations, the UNAOC, Miguel Anger Moratinos. The meeting had on the sidelines of the 2021 G20 Interfaith Forum in Lona explored ways to bolster cooperation to support dialogue among civilizations and cultures and to enhance the partnership between Bahrain and the UN in the dialogue among civilizations globally. Sheikh Khalid stressed the importance of boosting action with the Alliance of Civilizations to promote understanding between religions and cultures and confront the challenges facing the globe, mainly combating extremism and violence. Moratinos commended Bahrain's endeavors in reinforcing dialogue of civilizations and peaceful coexistence and stressed that the kingdom offers a distinguished model of coexistence, openness and respect for the other. The Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Saeed Zayani, affirmed that the edict issued by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to determine the commercial activities that companies with foreign capital may be licensed to practice comes in implementation of the Royal Directive, where the Cabinet approved a package of priority legislation to keep pace with the requirements of sustainable development for the benefit of citizens. Zayani noted that the edict aims to enhance investment opportunities and empower the Bahrainian investor by increasing opportunities to hold commercial partnerships and qualitative investment opportunities that enhance his presence in the commercial and investment sector in line with the requirements of sustainable development. The minister noted that Bahrain continues to, to develop the trade and investment system and strengthen the partnership between the public and private sectors, which contributes to achieving integration and the desired goals to move towards sustainable development. Industry, Commerce and Tourism Minister and Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority, the BTEA Chairman Zayed bin Rashid Zayani, inspected the progress of work on the Bahrain International Exhibitions and Conventions Center, the BIECC, in Sakhir. The minister said that the new exhibition town represents one of the most important strategic and vital projects which stem from the 2030 Bahrain Economic Vision. He noted that the milestone would further bolster Bahrain's presence on the world map of exhibitions and conventions and attract major public and specialized events and promote the kingdom as a favorite destination for exhibitions and conventions and investments. Zayani said that BTEA tourism and projects would be further developed to further enhance Bahrain's strategic standing on the world tourism map. He underscored the crucial importance of strategic partnership between the public and private sectors in supporting promising projects in Bahrain. The President of Israel, Isaac Herzog, received Bahrain's Ambassador to Israel, Khalid Yusuf al Jalahma, who presented his credentials as Bahrain's Ambassador to Israel. President Isaac Herzog welcomed Ambassador al Jalahma and congratulated him on assuming his duties as the first Ambassador of Bahrain to Israel. He affirmed the support of the Israeli government to carry out his duties to the fullest, highlighting His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa's courageous step of making peace with Israel under the framework of the Abraham Accords. The President of Israel tasked the ambassador to convey his greetings and appreciation to His Majesty the King and extended his wishes to the kingdom for continued progress 
and prosperity. The president also praised the course of diplomatic relations between Bahrain and Israel, adding that Bahrain is a model of peaceful coexistence. He showcased that the progression of bilateral cooperation indicates the interest and keenness of the two countries to advance these relations. For his part, the ambassador expressed pride in the honor he received from His Majesty the King to be the first ambassador of Bahrain to Israel. He emphasized that peace and the strategic choice of the kingdom, a wise approach adopted by His Majesty the King, building on his reform project, adding that Bahrain is guided in its diplomatic relations by well-established national principles. He also affirmed his confidence that this historic step will lay a solid foundation for the aspired relations between the two countries, adding that it paves the way towards permanent cooperation in various fields. During the official visit of the Deputy Minister of Tourism of Cyprus, Savas Perdios, an introductory event was held today to highlight touristic opportunities between the two countries. Perdios outlined the goals of the Cyprus Tourism Strategy 2020 to 2030 in order to adjust to the new circumstances imposed by the pandemic. Our vision until the year 2030 is to make sure that uh, Cyprus is classified as one of the top 30 most competitive tourism destinations in the world. Um, until 2020, we were number 44, so everything that uh, we're doing right now is focused on that. And uh, there's five pillars. Uh, we need to make sure that we're converting the island into a year-round destination, a higher quality destination, a digitally smart destination, a climate-friendly destination, and also a destination which um, uh, is beneficial to all the residents, meaning not just the beach areas, but also the mountain and rural areas. So these are the five pillars of our strategy uh, leading up to the vision which uh, I mentioned earlier. This is a project we are working for some time now uh, in order to uh, show that Cyprus is not only sun and sea. Uh, Cyprus has much more to offer. Of course, always our main attraction will be our beaches, but we want to show what is our advantage over other, other destinations. Uh, because of the small distances in the island is maybe one on, of the very, very few destinations where you can enjoy whatever you like within, uh, let's say, a short visit. It's very difficult to uh, do this in other countries because of the huge distances from one product to the other. So this is the new identity of Cyprus uh, we want to show abroad. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,158,123 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,100,565 had taken the second, and 269,255 had taken the booster dose. The Ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. And the Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 938 with 105 recoveries and 81 registered new cases. 40 of the new registered cases are expatriates, 35 are contact of active cases and 6 are travel related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus.